term pay gap. You usually think of women earning less than men. But there are a couple of jobs where the opposite is true. Luke Blackall went to investigate. Behind the glamour, the fashion world hides a guilty secret, a male-female pay gap. One study last year suggested that the top ten male models earned a tenth of the pay of their female counterparts. Stevie from Hackney is one who is affected by the issue. I think there is quite a clear difference between male models and female models, and I think that affects all ranges of models, if you like, from sort of the supermodels at the very high end to even commercial models and low models doing e-commerce. I don't, I don't think it's fully justified, but I know that there is a huge gap. And I read a stat the other day that was the pay difference at the moment is 148 <laughs> percent. Devon at Select Models argues that the growth of London Men's Fashion Week means pay parity is achievable. Um, it's all about selling. This is the agents' part. I'm sorry to yeah. say, this is the agents that yeah. make the models. It's the agents that make the models, and if you have the agents really pushing behind them, and you have the model who's a great model, then you can do it. You can match it. Porn actor Benedict says men in his industry earn half the pay of women. It doesn't sit comfortably with me whilst we have, I'm having to deal with in debates when I go and talk about pornography, these feminists, and at the same time I'm working in an industry where me, oh, there's sexism against men in that, in that sense. Any change will likely be slow, but it will perhaps be helped now that men are starting to speak out. All right, and that takes us to our headline question today. Do you feel discriminated against at work because of your gender? Are you a woman or man who feels your sex is stopping you from getting ahead? Head over to londonlive.co.uk to let us know. Got anything to say about it? Tweet us at London Live, and we've got some great guys to talk about it here. Starting up with Emma Sinclair. She's an ex-investment banker who's now CEO of Target Parking. Mike Buchanan from Merit in Business, who campaigns for men's equal rights. And Barbara Robert Kasumu, who's founder of Visible Women. Women. Now, um, Mike, is this something you're familiar with? We're, we're hearing men talking about sexism. Is, is this something that you feel like men's rights aren't, aren't focused on enough in, no, in the world I, of work? I think men's and, in fact, boys' um, um, human rights are trampled. Um, in, in, in our consultation, I also run a political party called Justice for Men and Boys, which is the only political party in the world fighting for men and boys. And we have 20 areas in there where the state assaults men and boys and there's not a single area in which the British state assaults women and girls, not one. Why do you feel men are being assaulted? I mean, this is a man's world you're talking about. It's not in. a man's world. The, the, I mean, men might be in the positions of power, but they arrange things to advantage women. So, I mean, I mean David Cameron being, being a prime, prime example, you know, if, 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 if Maria Miller had been a male MP, she would have been fired. And, and he gave her support before before even the details came out of, of, of the scandal. Right, so, so Mike thinks we, we don't need these drives, women don't need these drives to help them get ahead. Yeah, I mean, I understand that we all are a result of our upbringing, our environment and the experiences we've had. So that's incredibly broad. And what you're effectively talking about is men and women in the sort of social place and the political landscape. So that's hugely broad. I mean, if I was to narrow it down to business, because we've got a short amount of time today mm. and, and, and make a few comments. Yeah. I mean, you know, first of all, from my perspective, it's, it's about talent, not gender. Mm. So that to me is, is a, a very important point. It doesn't mean I don't know that there are issues in the workplace. And just like many pieces of regulation, it's often imposed not for people like you or I, who, who might uh, take a very um, sensible view about who we employ or how we employ them, but for those who don't. It's effectively to protect people. So, I, but, but uh, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I, I can't argue with you about some of the statistics to do with um, legislation that I'm not aware of, but in terms of the workplace, you know, there's, it's a hot topic. Quotas, I'm, I, no, I, I, those are things I don't believe in, but uh, I do understand that certainly, you know, it's only really in the last 10, 20 years that we've been seeing women fronting, you know, FTSE companies, entrepreneurship statistics rising. And that could be because of those quotas? Well, no, the quotas are, I mean, currently you have quotas in places like Scandinavia that have made a dramatic difference in mm. both the political and the business world, but, but we don't have them here and I'm not sure that I see them happening and I would be interested in what both yeah. um, Barbara and Mike do, think. Do you agree with that? Um, Yes, the, the, um, while we don't have legislated quotas, what we do have from the Davis report in 2011 is the threat of gender quotas. And that, that report contained um, a threat of gender, gender quotas in 2015 
if the FTSE 100 hadn't increased their female representation on their boards to 25% at that point. Now, the year before that um, report came out, just 13, 1-3% of new FTSE 100 director appointments were women. The, the year after the report, it was 55%. It had more than quadrupled. Do you have a problem with that? Well, it's, are, are we really suggesting that a, you know, in two years there's been a quadrupling of the number of women of merit? Um, apart from anything else, I mean, the more important thing... I don't know. Uh, so maybe, maybe what it is is just actually they've just sort of come to the front a little more, because I think 50-50 yes. is not really unreasonable. Well, it is yeah. unreasonable. And the reason it's unreasonable is, is that, um, you know, um, I can go into the reasons why there are a few women at the top of business, but, but, but uh, happy to do that. But, but at the end of the day, should we be trying to increase the proportion of women at the top of business when, when there's overwhelming evidence to show that when you increase the proportion of women on major corporate boards, corporate performance declines, and I'll very happily take you through that right. evidence so, if you so, like. So do, do, wow. you, do you agree with that, Rather, do you agree with that? No, not at all, not at all. The I think is the business I is going to be declined if no, we start not pushing women on top. Diversity and inclusion in all its forms, it makes business sense. And it's not about necessarily gender, it's difference of all kinds. I think if you have everyone that is uh, the same around the table, it, you, you can't imagine the... I, I, don't, I don't understand how it, you would then expect to be quite diverse in your offering as a business. I think you need to have a diverse w workforce and you definitely need to have diversity within the top because at the end of the day, what, what message are we sending out to young girls? Yeah, but Barbara, we've just had an hour in the green room and at the beginning of that hour, I offered to show you our, our short briefing paper sh with the evidence that um, putting more women on boards leads to, leads to financial decline. And I'll very nearly happily take, take one minute now to take you yeah. through that. Can I, can I, I'm looking forward to hearing it, we'll leave you, but I just want to just quickly just say two things. First of all, as, as Mark Twain said, there are lies, damn lies and statistics. And I would also say, I respect whatever it is you're about to read us, but I've, I've, I've seen the direct opposite from incredibly sensible, intelligent, uh, global sources of data and media. So I, I'm sure that you've got some very interesting facts Emma, and I can't wait to Emma, hear them. You haven't, but, uh, you haven't. What you might have seen Mike, is reports and studies... Women on boards reduces performance. I'm sorry, but you know, all the evidence shows that. Um, what, what is happening is that correlation is being misrepresented as causation. Um, for, uh, you know, I've been running Campaign for Merit in Business for two years now, and in that time we've challenged the government, we've challenged dozens of organisations, including the CBI, and we've, we've challenged um, hundreds of individual proponents for more women on boards to uh, challenge our, our position or to, or to provide any evidence of a causal link between more women on boards and financial performance. And even Professor Susan Vinicum, of Cranfield University, the leading academic proponent in the world, mm -hmm. admitted to a House of Lords inquiry mm -hmm. two right, years okay, ago that, that, that she has no such evidence. Mike, would you employ a woman? Of course. So, but, but wouldn't that lead to Mike, some kind of decline? So. Indeed. Hmm. No, well, no, I wouldn't preference... Just uh, not a senior uh, no, woman. No, no, no. No, no, I'd have no problem there at all. But what, what I wouldn't do is, is, is to um, promote a woman over a more capable man. Oh, well, okay. We agree with you. We agree with you. Barbara, what do you have to no, say? No, no, Sorry, I think Mark. it is about talent at the end of the day, uh, going back to what Emma said. And the challenge that we have is that you're implying that women are not talented and therefore that's mm -hmm. the reason why they're not on boards. When actually I think the challenge is that there is underrepresentation of women on boards. I do, do believe in us getting to a, a critical mass um, for in terms of that distribution. And I think that there needs to be more done to ensure that people are not being challenged purely by their gender, but ensuring that they're actually encouraged because of their no, gender. Nobody, is say, nobody is saying there's a disproportionately quick increase. And I take what you're saying about that statistic, because that's interesting. There's been a kind of on the scale of women suddenly mm. joining. But, but that, you know, first of all, can one pinpoint whether or not that's because that uh, increases because some great women have been pushed forward that ordinarily wouldn't have been? No. Or because there's a favour? I think it's what a gravy I respect train. everything you're doing, but if you're suggesting that all of those women may not have been suitable for the job and it just so happens that because women on boards is on the agenda, they are, that is the only reason that they've all been mm. taken on, mm. I would find that very hard I'm to not, digest. I'm not okay. saying that's the only reason. No, one moment, sorry, Mark. We've got somebody on Skype. Now, she's a young lady. Her name's um, Sanya Jeet Thandi. She's actually studying at L LSC. Um, hi, Sanya. Hey. How are you doing, my lovely? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. Now, listen, what we want to find out is how do you feel about your future as a woman? Mm -hmm. you're, right now you're studying. What, what do you feel like your future prospects are? Um, I think I've been very fortunate. I've been brought up in a way that's, you know, allowed me the mentality that I genuinely think I can go, you know, be a mother and also go into whichever industry I decide to and be successful at it. So for example, personally, I want to go into fashion journalism and then long term, go into exporting clothes worldwide. Um, but I think 
a lot of women, especially like the older generation, for example, haven't had the same kind of upbringing. So in order to kind of change the whole gender discrimination thing, I think we really do need to address like young people. So for example, Rolls-Royce have 14 executive board members, only one of which is a woman. And they said as a company, that's simply because very few women go into engineering. So the way we bring up kids the next generation needs to be in a more equal way, meaning that, you know, kids need to not be kind of pigeonholed into certain industries depending on their sex. So like more women should be encouraged to go into like, yeah, like engineering, like finance. A lot of my friends at London School of Economics, my girlfriends, um, a lot of them seem to apply for more of the operations and human resources jobs as opposed to the actual hands-on banking, which is quite interesting. So I think it's really just about education, um, the way we bring up people. What do you, how do you feel about that? What do you think should be done? Um, I think, obviously, at home is the first place. Parents need to kind of encourage their kids to be more open-minded. So, you know... Yeah, so like parenting firstly. Secondly, I think in terms of schools and stuff, um, education, I'm not one to say the government should really get too involved, but at the same time, perhaps in like, even like primary school level, basic education, um, just like very simple steps could be implemented, I'm sure, to ensure that children don't kind of feel they need to go into certain, like any pressure in any way. Yes. All right, thanks so much, um, Sanya. Barbara, oh, sorry, can I, can I ask Mike a point? I mean, because first of all, it's really important that the, the boys are educated to, to effectively have the right opinion of girls, which is, you know, you're in a wonderful role for that, and some of the things you're doing with fathers and justice is very important. But um, my, my sort of other question to you would be as follows Even if you thought that that spike was uh, for the reasons that you believe it is, which is not impossible, perhaps. Do you not think that we need to really redress the balance? And sometimes it's just like everything in life. You've got to give things a jolt. And for a couple of years, a balance has got to swing in order for the pendulum to be slightly even. Well, no. Uh, you know, the, the, I mentioned the threats of the FTSE 100, uh, the 25% target. We know from a recent publication that the government is now going for 50% in the FTSE 100. We know that the, the, the FTSE 350 is next on the list. And at the end of the day, if we need more women in boardrooms, by the same logic, we need more white sprinters in the, 100 in the Olympics 100 metres final, and I, I, I don't see anyone claiming that. Barbara, how do you feel about that? God. Wow. <laughs> that was an interesting... Well, perhaps we should give them a 20-yard start so that they can uh, actually get uh, a bit An somewhere. interesting statement. Uh, going back to what Sanya said um, and talking about actually the next generation and challenging, I guess, almost a pink culture when it comes to talking to young girls about role models and aspirations. You do a lot um, of work in that, yes. don't you? So I run a campaign called Visible Women, and the idea is to match young women and girls with inspirational role models and mentors, specifically targeting male-dominated industries. When we look, I think the, the, the statistic shows that we need to have at least 100,000 new scientists and engineers by 2060. That means we need to be talking about, as much as we're talking about women on boards, as an immediate kind of response and challenge, we actually need to to start younger. All right, then. Well, look, we've been polling you all morning, asking if you feel discriminated against at work because of your gender. Let's have a look at where the results are right now. OK, now, 30% of you say, yes, you do feel discriminated against because of your sex, whereas 70% of you said no. And can we get a breakdown of those figures at all? Right, apparently, it was Apparently, 50% of the people we asked, 50% of the women actually did feel like they were discriminated, and, 10, and only 10% of men felt discriminated against. So, but it's a feeling. It's no more than that. I mean, you, uh, I was interested particularly to hear about the engineering side and, and what you just said about that and science. Um, if, you, if, if, if today you're a, very quickly, Mike. Yeah, sorry. No, if today you're a female postgraduate engineering student at Brunel University, you're entitled to a, an additional fifteen thousand pound a year grant purely because of your gender. That's because they need more um, female engineers. They, they anyway. don't need. They need more engineers. They don't need more female engineers. Hmm. Female engineers are far more likely to quit the profession. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. All right. Then look. Well, that's it. We're going to have to leave it there. If you want anything to add, just go over to um, our Twitter page at London Live um, and tweet head type, headline at London. Guys, thank you so much for getting thank involved. You. That's it from Headline London. We're back on Monday from 12.30. Got anything you want to add, just email us at londonlive.co.uk. Up next on London Live, it's London's Burning. See you on Monday. Bye. <laughs>